So if you stumbled across this video, I'm Fearless and I'm going to be doing a how to play Twitter from the Academy Attestations with Fearless series. I'll be going through various different playbooks that exist on the Academy and kind of playing through them for you. So you have a guide into what we'd be looking for in order to gain your attestation. So um, stick in and enjoy the ride. When you're starting to go through your academy work or playing any playbook on the metagame platform, you arrive here, enter .metagame.whatthefuck and in the top right hand corner, you'll see dashboard, academy and profiles. Okay, and what we're going to do here, we're just going to click on academy. It's going to open a hyperlink. As you can see, I'm already signed in here and I thought as marketing champion, I'd lead us through a couple aspects of playbooks. So um, it's split into five main sections. So you've got messy game, which is, you know, specific pathways for different aspects of metagame and how you can play them. There's meta, which is a section about the bigger picture, the state of the world and global philosophies. You know, Game B, the Meta Crisis, uh, Moloch, things such as that. And then you get into some of the more uh, first principle stuffs like Ethereum, DAOs, DeFi, NFTs, etc. Where you can learn about all the different protocols that kind of exist within these different sectors uh, and then some. But what we're going to be focusing on today is how to play twitter okay so very easily click through and as you can see on the left hand side of my screen there is three steps on how to play twitter so the idea being is that you read through the instructions you synthesize and understand um what is being written and then you go and apply it. So that's what I plan on doing today. And um, we'll check in with this and we'll see what we come up with over the course of the coming days. Right, so we've navigated here now. So let's give us a quick read. This playbook is about playing Twitter as an MMO RPG. Most of it is also applicable to other social media like Farcaster or Lens. Twitter is a multi multiplayer real-time virtual world primarily text-based with limited multimedia support it combines elements of role-playing games hack and slash player versus player interactive fiction and online chat players can read view and contribute descriptions of objects and other players and non-player characters and actions performed in virtual worlds as well as real world players typically interact with each other by utilizing strings that resemble a natural language. While traditional MUDs typically implement RPGs set in distinct fantasy worlds populated by fictional races and monsters, with players choosing classes in order to gain specific skills or powers, Twitter allows every player to project their own fantasy and define their own game. The flexible nature of Twitter makes it difficult for any singular definition of the game to become canon canonical. Conflict between players with different interpretations of Twitter is a key feature of Twitter itself. Instead, one of the most games is Hey, one of the most popular games is Hey, fuck this guy. Well, we break away from this for a second. I think what they're trying to say is um, that Twitter is a game of engagement and discoverability and the most divisive comments usually get the most engagement because they are the most polarizing so realizing the power most casual players do not appear to have caught the true potential of utility of twitter or perhaps they're indifferent to it however tweets is a living entity that allows players to meet interact engage with thousands of others as levels of individual thoughts properly constructed a web of tweets allow you, allows you to witness how other players discover your tweets via the patterns of likes retweets and quote tweets connect each fragment thought and experience into part of a greater whole and recognize and embellish patterns in your own play 
We've not yet begun talking about relationships. Players can build relationships with other players over time and share interactions through cooperation. Multiple players can share and merge webs with one another and help each other to find a shared information. So yeah, if we break away again from this for a second, that speaks to things such as cross-marketing and sharing platforms, you know, the likes of Dex Protocol and Metagame, We've done plenty of Twitter spaces covering a wide range of different topics from DAO sustainability to, um, you know, product market fit in DAOs and total, uh, total addressable market, which have been really interesting. Um, there's been calls with Optin and you know, other protocols that exist on Twitter as well. And um, what that allows us to do is share our communities with each other's audience and kind of try and create more of a synergy at the top of the funnel before people actually join and actually engage in our organizations and then next mix it up any player can significantly improve their experience with twitter by examining their own usage and evaluating it's against their own desires and goals at any moment any player can completely change their experience with twitter by deciding to play it differently who are you following what are you tweeting why what are the experiences and who would you like to play with? With a little bit of introspection, Twitter can be a tool for self-inquiry, making friends, testing ideas, messing around and finding information and then so. And like everything else, it's just a game. Have fun. Okay, that was cool. So this is a guide kind of leading us down a pathway. Let's check this out. Follow curiosity, develop taste, publish writing and make friends. His top three investments, aggressively following his curiosity, aggressively publishing writing and aggressively making great friends. I'm not sure how aggressive these things need to be, but I, I get the gist. These are the three aspects he's looking to focus on. So Toby Shorin, um, designer graphic, getting good at Twitter and getting good at writing. So in terms of writing, it's selected for an audience long form writing styles, mind mapping for exploration, narrative development, endurance writing, chasing an idea on one side of the Venn diagram, uh, getting good at Twitter is volume, effort posting, tweeting from life, shit posting, threading, Twitter writing style. And then in the middle, got using media, self-reference, developing the idea mode and taking notes. And here we have some cool links going over you know how to kind of write some some interesting tweets and this is from 2019 so this is going back quite a while well the beautiful thing about being a rogue is that we can take a look at what exists this is five years old in regards to advice and um since then we built our own strategy that exists for metagame so we're going to jump into that instead okay so you join us now over here and we're checking out the twitter algorithm for 2024 what that looks like so there's eight metrics that um prioritized by twitter at this current moment in time so tweets that receive a high number of shares and retweets that's number one number two tweets that garner numerous likes and replies three tweets containing media files such as images and videos four tweets that prompt users to follow the author five tweets that are not reported as spam or not safe for work content six tweets with single highly relevant hashtags this might have even changed by the way uh seven tweets with our external links and eight tweets from accounts with a solid reputation emphasis on solid reputation so we're all aware that twitter has an ad model and that's how they you know they generate their income um for the most part on their platform so they're in the attention economy and they're selling ads and they have a subscription model via twitter plus and then they also probably sell user data right from certain leaks that exist um from the twitter code base there is a multiplying effect for certain interactions on posts themselves so there's a 30x multiplier for likes 20x for tweets 
one for reply and one for comments that you can see there. So you kind of want to push for retweets and likes for the most part but likes are actually more important and especially with the introduction of um, the for you page not just the following page that kind of changes the dynamic totally again and what we're playing here is the discoverability lottery twitter basically rewards people that keep people on the platform who are controversial the non-spam active accounts which is very difficult to do when you're a small account just trying to um, gain a following or engage following and then emotionally engaging content so as you can see um, this was taken from a little while ago maybe a, a month or so ago and this framework that I've designed here we actually have been able to kind of increase impressions with a couple of viral tweets here and there that type of thing but maintaining that momentum is definitely challenging but here's where you come in as a player so um, I'm going to share kind of my framework here and we'll go through that quickly and then we'll get back to where we left off right here. The crypto and blockchain DAO problem. New participants are really here just to speculate and invest. Use cases are not yet obvious to the average consumer and crypto products are too crypto focused or too crypto forward, which we see kind of all over the um, crypto sphere. So there's, there's almost like a chasm to cross for these people. And it could be the double chasm, you know, people to crypto asset owners, to be becoming crypto people, to becoming DAO members. And then there's a single chasm from people to DAO member. And within all of them, you can see there's obviously inertia and friction that are kind of stopping people from actually engaging with a lot of these aspects of the blockchain space be it jargon just lack of awareness and a lack of understanding of why DAOs are even relevant and how they can potentially change the structures that be within the world through transparency and uh, public good ethos and values so here you can see the twitter strategy the trojan horse so there's two kind of ideas regarding how um strategy could be built and what that might look like and what a good monthly target would be for different aspects of the strategy and that would be initially 36 community call posts eight video posts four product posts and 12 threads and product posts whereas with a rebalanced strategy um the idea was to push more for video posts threads and product posts and reactive threads if we take twitter as the product and we look at twitter at the top of the funnel and looking at playing that engagement game and discoverability lottery um we have an idea based on the the algorithm um what we can and what we should try and push for given that uh, i implemented some of these ideas and came up with you know, threads and tweets that got us large amounts of engagement and i wrote some notes regarding you know what has actually worked best in regards to effort and um outcomes and to be honest what i found is impressions rate is high in shit posting reply going to tweets early before they become viral that means targeting the right accounts to reply to which is actually more important than replying quantity. Quantity is important to kind of increase the feel for potentially viral tweets, but at the same time, it kind of is really a numbers game. Engagement rate is really high in threads, but it wasn't higher than shit posting. And um, because of that um, effort to outcome ratio, the kind of way to push things is really to shit post and reply guy your way into engagement which is not necessarily the easiest thing to do so here's some guidelines reply from lists and not the for you section for you aggregates viral posts that means you've missed the wave create a list of accounts featuring high impression interactions tweet factual things on factual posts shit post on shit posts very simple and tweet on topic 
with a mutual with a healthy follower account and engage with their posts embrace the micro eco chamber so i feel like those are really simple rules that we can kind of like get behind next we'll get into kind of a simple framework for doing that since we're going to look at shit posting here you can see you know we'll be ridiculing game a to promote game b you know if we want to promote the the solution we must first talk about the problem we can do this in in different ways we can inspire we can educate or we can entertain and because shit posting and reply going actually gets us the most engagement we're going down the route of entertainment for the most part with that in mind i think it would be really cool to kind of pick at some narratives that exist and um thematically kind of been looking at a lot of things which are more like solar park network network state ish uh and dow focus but some of the best ways to kind of break the mold of these themes is to kind of tweet about problems that exist across all three sectors so we're not going to niche down we're going to focus on a particular problem and how we can kind of spin it to be focused on what we're trying to do which is ridicule game a so that we can gain engagement and discoverability and promote game b here are five c's that we can kind of utilize as a framework for what i'm looking to produce culture war curation viral content creation bespoke content conversion and then community so that kind of takes us down the funnel i'd be looking to to channel when uh looking to play twitter so in regards to the culture war let's maybe think and have a look at twitter and um decide you know what is of interest at the moment and what can we really talk about create some bespoke content around that previously i've been doing a lot of curation like taking videos from tiktok and posting them which has had mixed success um but we haven't done much bespoke content creation and i think that'd be fun to see if we can get any form of conversion in regards to impressions and uh, increase our twitter following all right so we'll get into that next all right so here we are on the metagame twitter page all good so uh, let's have a look let's check some things out what, what do we want to do i think a good place to start when trying to figure out what's trending Go on your home page and just give it a scroll. Have a look at what people are, en are engaging with at the moment. I think there's a lot going on with Elon Musk. Let's check him out. Let's see what he's saying. So, yeah, there's a lot of conversation around um, Apple and the integration of OpenAI's uh, open uh, chat GPT into um, you know, series AI. And I think that's, that's quite an interesting topic that we could talk about in regards to the culture war and um, how AI is being utilized throughout our, you know, our, our hardware and, and software that we own, but also how that's being used to spy on us. So I think, what we're walking ourselves towards to is this idea of surveillance capitalism and some of the problems that exist with that in regards to maintaining the privacy uh, of our data and the sovereignty in our choices regarding who gets access to it i think it's well known that a, a lot of us don't read our terms and conditions when we're utilizing apps or downloading you know it could be it could be anything from apps to hardware use it's very likely we're just going to accept the terms and conditions just so that we can get on with using whatever we want to use and that leads us to being liable for uh giving consent to our data despite the fact that we might not want these companies to have it which is what elon musk is talking about here so yeah i think it'd be really cool to get into some you know some tweets about surveillance capitalism and not just apple and open ai but you know let's, let's take a look at someone else as well so th this is a funny tweet let's take a look at adobe 
for instance. Search. Okay, so Sasha Yanshin. I just cancelled my Adobe license after many years as a customer. This new term gives Adobe worldwide royalty free license to reproduce, display, and distribute or do whatever they want with any content that I produce using their software. This is beyond insane. No creator in their right mind can accept this. So they're willing to, you know, bypass non disclosure agreements to get access to your bespoke designs creations and creativity and then utilize ai to model that and that is kind of dystopian because i know accelerationism is really in but there is a certain element of theft here and maybe we don't own anything but i think in this case if you pay for adobe if you're paying for a product you should be able to keep what you're working on within that private so again this isn't really speaking to a meme as such but it does speak again to this whole surveillance capitalism problem that we have with ai so i feel like again we're vindicated in choosing this uh, particular narrative i feel like i've done like a, a nice amount of research here it's been pretty interesting and I've decided, you know what, that's that's what I want to kind of talk about over the next two days. So we're going to look to create some memes, I think. And once we've created some cool memes uh, regarding this situation, maybe we can utilize the same framework to build out more for another narrative. But we'll get onto that tomorrow. All right. So we find ourselves here on Image Flip and we're checking out some of the meme templates obviously a lot of these are a great ways to kind of display ideas give analogies story and narrative to the particular problem that we want to look at and um yeah there's a particular one i'm looking for at the moment and we'll see if we can find it let's check out spongebob right here so And of course, always good to check uh, spelling for all of my uh, dyslexic people out there. Surveillance. Beautiful. So let's generate this meme. Okay, awesome. Let's generate it. Let's copy this image. Head over to Figma. Great. So first meme down. Let's try and get to a healthy number. Let's get to at least um let's get to 10. Okay, great. So as you can see, we started off with the sponge from meme, non-stop surveillance capitalism. I am a head out. Um you need more data which again speaks to data and surveillance capitalism. Then uh, we talked to a bit of Adobe here. So I'm a humble creator. Fuck your NDA. I'm Adobe. Speaking to how they kind of are willing to take what you create and do what they want with it. And then explaining why products shouldn't steal our data and prioritize decentralization which is how we kind of look to the mass market or the general public when we talk about these tenants of web free philosophy, values and ethos. They think we're mad, but they consistently see evidence as to why it could be important. So I think this is a cool meme to kind of illustrate that. And then uh, obviously Adobe, you take the mask off, surveillance capitalists, that's truly what they are. Okay, so we've got like a good five memes here. The goal is obviously to get to 10. And um, yeah, we're going to try and get to 10. So now we have an open AI surveillance capitalist meme ready for deployment. And then that leaves us in a position where we have just four more. So 
I'm going to go create four more and I'll check in back with you before I then deploy these memes. Okay, so we're back and I've created just over 10 memes. Let's see how many do we have? Okay, we have about 15 memes um, kind of speaking about uh, surveillance capitalism and some of the problems that we're seeing. You know, um, it's really cool because uh, this particular topic um is one that we're going to keep seeing as time progresses and as people are looking for this shareholder value i'm not even sure if it's about shareholder value anymore um in terms of why uh you know these companies want our data i think it could be even uh, bigger or deeper than that but what i've tried to do is kind of uh, simplify a lot of my feelings towards surveillance capitalism in these memes uh, and then eventually distribute them i mean um very recently we've had let's have a look what have we had we have had open ai sam altman um assign a former nsa um director to become a part of open ai so yeah, a former NSA director is now joined the uh, OpenAI's board of directors. And obviously this is done under the guise of protecting uh, their systems and um, from, you know, bad actors. But within that, obviously there's a lot of surveillance that, that exists. And I don't think it's necessarily the best thing to tie... Um, governmental institutions to something as opaque as AI, um, especially in, especially with how the data could potentially be used and what those models could eventually train and what they'd be utilized for. Um, and to some extent, it almost breaches individual people's sovereignty um, because what is being inputted into these models is then being um, utilized to kind of build more models or to build frameworks around like different types of people what they're interested in and push people towards certain types of beliefs you know uh almost like the invisible hand in regards to what the ai decides to output and that gets into i guess the ethics of ai and things of that nature so as we see more of this stuff kind of happening these memes are going to be super relevant to some of the um, narratives and some of the decisions that we see made by a lot of these big companies, uh, especially in the US. Okay, so what I'm doing currently is going on each of these different memes and panels and I'm naming them in my left-hand column because I'm using Figma. And then after that, we'll do a simple export as a JPEG. Okay, great. To meta game, let's go into Twitch shit posting. Double click that. Okay, and then uh, we'll do a new folder. Play Twitter. Let's open that up. Save here. And I'll repeat that for the rest of the memes and then we'll actually start deploying them across social media and we'll see what type of results we get. Okay, great. So now that we have a bunch of our memes saved under various different names, I can, um, I can personally understand how I've kind of gone about that is I've taken pro probably the main theme of each meme and the character that is placed in the meme. Uh, I've put them together and that's how I've kind of come up with some of the names. So the, like the meme with Drake, for instance, Drake data fiend, um, SpongeBob sponge spy shareholder value. It's an acronym and SD is standard deviation, data focus, standard deviation, art focus. Um, and that's, that's kind of my modality of thinking for, for the naming convention of these memes and that way that helps me to kind of organize um 
myself around which ones to deploy based on yeah ba based on the tweets that we kind of see and interact with so if we go onto twitter quickly and check this out so recently the eu have been thinking about upload moderation which means an end-to-end -to, -end to end encryption uh again um one of the web free like principles that we think uh, are necessary to kind of stop some of this surveillance capitalism and oversight from governments is um, the upholding of privacy um, in regards to these matters. So I've dropped a uh, non-stop surveillance capitalism SpongeBob meme. I I'm a head out um, meme. I don't think it has the best fit but I'm trying to deal with what I have and kind of play more of a numbers game. So we're going to start deploying a lot of these over the, the coming days and we'll see kind of how they, how they work out. It's usually best to do this with fresh tweets. As you can see this, if we go back, this was tweeted on June 17th. It's now June 18th. And with that in mind, that kind of does, change things you really want to catch these tweets fresh because that's when the initial um engagement um happens pretty much and that's why i kind of promote uh, instead of looking at the for you page as the best place to kind of uh interact from you actually want to set up these lists so we have a solar punk network state and high performance list high performance is basically anybody i've interacted with on the metagame account that has given us like a high amount of engagement so this will consist of accounts that just get a lot of distribution on on twitter and to be fair this is kind of where you want to focus um so i'll be focusing on this particular list after that focus on the network status lists i think it's really cool anytime we mention network states at the moment balaji um has a million followers he always likes our stuff and it shows that he still is is fighting for the network state meme and um and i think it's it's a meme that is a good meme to describe where DAOs could potentially go anyway okay so here you'll see we have uh, one of the memes that we dropped earlier, obviously that was on an old post, June 17th. Um, this is posted four hours ago. We've only got nine impressions. Um, again, kind of one of the, the best things you can do if you, if you see here, um, this tweet was four hours ago. This reply was three hours ago and we have 400 impressions here. Um, the beauty of that is just timing. Timing obviously matters in regards to memes and how soon um, the meme connects with kind of that discoverability lottery. So although these memes are uh, great, when you're thinking about how to play Twitter, you also need to consider timing and relevance in regards to when you drop your memes and the general discourse that is going around. Um, with that in mind, that's a, it gives us a great takeaway on how to play twitter in the future and looking at the feedback loop and tightening that up so that we can deploy memes which are more relevant at their point in time rather than building a litany of memes um rather than making a bunch of memes for one particular narrative so i think there's two kind of paths here that that stick out to me is you can make one memes on the go and then categorize those memes that you've um, you've created after the fact, or you can take a look at narratives as a whole, break them down and create memes surrounding those narratives and deploy them as you choose. I think both are two really interesting strategies and both give an idea on how to play Twitter. And if I was doing this playbook, um, I'd produce memes, deploy them, test them, come back with the evidence in a document and send that document into the playbooks protocol. Let's have a look.
and I had further show my proof of completion and how I went about it, what strategy I took and just give enough information for the auditors to uh, complete your proof so that you can get your NFT attestation for being a wizard of Twitter. And it doesn't necessarily have to take you um, a couple of days to, to create this type of stuff. This is something that can be done over the course of a day, two days, three days in regards to how you want to play Twitter itself. Um, I'm just simply giving an example of how I might go about it and feel free to go about it with your own personal strategy or the strategy that has been um, laid out for you here in the playbooks academy on how to play Twitter. So that would be me done. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Metamedia on YouTube. I'm going to be doing more of a series in regards to how to play playbooks or how to interact with the academy so that people have a point of reference for how to interact with our protocols and it should all be pretty interesting. So thanks for your time and uh, I'm sure we'll check in later.